Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Tonight, the three teams that we talked about all season long as a cut above the rest of college basketball. UConn rolls Stenson, Houston rolls Longwood, most important one, Purdue the Grambling State. It was a little sweaty there for a second, Henson, but they ended up getting the win. Purdue gonna make Who you, you sweat. They're gonna make you sweat. Purdue's. I mean, I think the most impressive was Houston. Um, yeah. Longwood looked like they wanted to go home. I mean, they were like they were just they couldn't score, and the speed at which Longwood was moving the ball was actually pretty good. But Houston's just so connected defensively. They're on a string. Um, if your first time seeing Houston is in the tournament. You're gonna have a tough time beating them, and how you beat Houston is starting off. Why? Fast. Why? Why? Why do you say that? How you beat Houston? No. Why do you say that if you the first time seeing them? Why because the size, the length, athleticism, the bulk. Kevin, the bulk. Kevin yeah. Sexton said, "Hey, look." At halftime, he said, "We're not the '87 Celtics. We know where our bread and butter is at, and so do they." So, <laughs> if a team like that, that's scary. No. I they were absolutely the most impressive. Uh, what they did to poor Longwood, who didn't deserve that, by the way. <laughs> Longwood was so happy to get there. They didn't deserve that. Uh, that was an ass whooping. And here's the thing, too. It, they were up 40 points, and Sampson was on them, saying they weren't playing hard yes. enough. Like, and, and here's the thing. They took care of anything inside the paint. I, I want to say there was five minutes left to go in the game or something like that, and Longwood had six points in the paint. They completely shut down that area of the floor. I, I said this last year. I said it two years ago. I'm going to say it again this year. It looks like it hurts to play Houston. Every cut is bumped. Every drive is met with extra help and forceful help. Not just help defense, forceful help defense. And they're just different levels of athleticism they, on that they, Houston team. It's it's like they kind of play. They kind of run a defensive system like Tony Bennett at UVA, where they trap the post and yep. try to get him. Except they have but it's more physical. high level yeah. physical athletes, yes. which is why they graded out as the best team in the country. So. And, they, and they push that pressure out yep. because they have guys that can get out and guard near half court. Mm -hmm. They don't have to sit back there like to, a couple of Tony's guys. Houston just scares me. They play so slow yep. that that a team that may not be able to be into the game with them physically from a defensive offensive standpoint could, could keep it close. All right, my big question. I'm going to throw it to you, Rob. Which – Number one is the most susceptible to losing in the second round now. Okay, so Houston plays Texas A&M. Your UConn Huskies play uh, Northwestern, right? Yep. Uh, Carolina has – help me out here. Carolina has Michigan State. Michigan State and State Purdue tomorrow, has Utah and State. Purdue has Utah State. Um, I think it's Carolina or Houston, personally. And I, the reason I say that is – I think Carolina is a step below those other three teams. And we've said it all season long. There's no disrespect to them. They're just a, it's, they're, they're really good. Those other teams are elite this year. Um, and it's Michigan State and Tom Izzo. We've all seen Ta Tyson Walker go for like 35 before. Right? We know what he is and we know how good he is as a basketball player. And then with Texas A&M, I mean, when you have Wade Taylor going and Boots Radford going and, uh, and Manny uh, uh, Obaseki, all three of them going. I mean that. You saw what they did and in Nebraska and tonight. They can rebound with yes. Houston. So I, I think that might be it. I mm -hmm. think that could be the one. And we just saw Houston lose to Iowa State convincingly yes. not long ago. And the, Juwan the, the Roberts at least looked healthy today. The, the difference between Texas A&M and Iowa State is not all that different in terms of like the personnel and the makeup. Now Iowa State is much better defensively, but Texas A&M can get on that glass. They pound the offensive boards, right? And they got three dudes. They can go get you 30. That's a hard hat game. Yes. That's a hard hat game. Henry Coleman, big yeah. physical. He can yeah. compete physically. Uh, and then they have that individual playmaker in Wade Taylor the fourth. I, if I had to pick one that I think is the most susceptible, I think I would go with Houston as well. Because, too, you mentioned their comeback earlier in the season. Uh, they're not having to fight back from 20 now. They, they realize that they can play with they Houston. They know they can play with them. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go my, my Tar Heels. I put a phone call in today. I told them. I said they they, 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 they over there raw riding in Michigan State. Make sure you tell the boys. But also, I'm a stat guy. I was trying to find a tweet so we could do a little stat check on live. But I, I got the tweet in my phone. Underdogs or teams that have been favored in the 1-8 game 
by five or less have lost three out of five outright. So statistically, historically, UNC could lose that game if history kind of repeats itself. Mm -hmm. Wow. You got to make your pick. Yeah, I would say I'd be fearful if I'm Houston. I would be fearful watching Texas A&M today that, again, was it a one-off or could it be a weekend? Could it be a weekend where they're feeling it? They're making shots. They're playing in the same building again. They know they made shots on that court, on those rims. They've got that confidence, that swagger. And, again, they played with them earlier in the season. Yep. Yeah, I will just say one thing. If you want to know why UConn is where they are right now as a program, they were up 33 at halftime. It was the largest lead that they've had since 1986 heading into the half of an NCAA tournament game. And Dan Hurley went to the interview with, I believe it was Tracy Wolfson, pissed off, yelling, and said, we got to grow up a little bit. I The last couple of minutes I didn't like. I went for 30 seconds in that interview ranting about how poorly they played in the last two minutes. They were up 52 to 19 on a team from the Atlantic Sun. Some of the most most fiery speeches I've ever had as a college athlete with Coach Williams when we were up 20, yeah. or when we won by 20. I don't know what it is with those coaches. Yeah. Like, but when you look, thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.